I know. <laughs> Step two is done. Now, if it'll pick up on YouTube, that would be great. Come on. Come on, YouTube. Let's go. Come on. We got five people watching and waiting. Okay. It's there. All right. So we are ready. Um, yeah. I'm going to hit stream over here. Not now. Oh, actually, it is streaming. How does that work sometimes? I swear. Anyway. Oh, well. <laughs> here we go. <clears throat> Yay! We are live, I think. I hope. I pray. Let us know <laughs> if you can hear us, you can see us. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. I know we're like, meh, like 10 minutes late, but that's life, right? Um, we are here tonight for Thirsty Thursday to talk about fantasy travels and mm -hmm. drink a little champagne with one of our favorite champagne lovers, Christine Campbell. Hi, so lovely. To have yes. you here. Yay, 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 yay. Um, let's take a little time and maybe introduce uh, introduce yourself, Christine. I actually have I have a couple questions for all of your titles as we're going oh my through God. this. Okay. I know. So I've been on to the uh, to your Facebook page and you have quite the myriad of of things that you have claim to fame of. And I'm going to show this. This is you on Facebook. Can you see this? It says wine writer, IWSC judge. What? Yes. What is that? That's, that's the International Wine and Spirits Competition in London, England. Oh, Brianne Cohen is, did that yep. too, didn't yep. she? She's one of my co-judges. Yeah. So I've been doing that for three years and I'm a BCVQA wine assessor, which means that all of our British Columbia VQA wines go through a assessment panel to ensure their quality before they are released to market. And I am one of those people that has been blessed or cursed, I'm not sure what, with a uh, very sensitive nose. So I can smell the bad and I can smell the good. So we can assess for faults. And then hashtag Shardcore is uh, one of my favorite things because I love my Chardonnay so very much. Um, and I'm a French wine scholar, that's FWS, and I've got my masters of champagne. So those are, that's, and I write, you know, in there too. You do. I think you have the, I would, venture to say you have the highest wine pedigree we have had on this show as to date wow <laughs> what do you think stub is have we known any have we had anybody that's had a higher wine pedigree uh i don't know that we have actually i, I don't i mean yeah. like, like master of champagne like i feel like that trumps everything anyway yeah and i know that I this about a lot of our guests like christine's one of my favorite people in the wine industry like oh. just yeah yeah thank you love reading her writing love listening to her talk about her passion love hanging out with her like she's just she's an awesome all-around awesome human being in wow. addition to knowing more about wine than all of us do and she survives the the tundra northern uh, hemisphere it was snowing Canada. in the backyard today no even for, really four minutes. Drink. for four minutes you know that's okay wow <laughs> um so if you've noticed in the background do you notice the background is maybe a little picture of the adorable trio of your family the yeah. the, the no not the background behind you the background oh. of the show the picture <laughs> you're like where where <laughs> yes that was taken in Reims. that was taken um a lot of people pronounce it reams but mm -hmm. it Reims. one of the most get a lot of lessons one of the most hard to pronounce, mispronounced, overly bizarre, easy spelling champagne words of all time. <laughs> yes. I think I actually opened a champagne from there at one point and pronounced it correctly. And someone sent me a message and said, that's not how that's pronounced. And I go, it actually is. Because I go to my Google Translate a lot when I open wines. I'm like, I want to make sure I'm saying these words right when I'm doing videos. So I'm like, yep, yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. Good. 
All yeah. right, now that we've established Christine is an amazing human being and so much more refined than the rest of us, uh, what are we drinking tonight, folks? Jen, you go first. Well, I'm opening oh. the bottle. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> anybody else is welcome. <laughs> so I actually, uh, I had a, uh, a Cremant yesterday, um, which was fun. And then today I thought, because just it was in my fridge down here in the garage and I like to keep something bubbly on hand. I've actually got a Jacqueline Leone uh, Rosé out of New Mexico. Wow. Sparkling wine from New Mexico. So it's bubbles. It's not champagne, but it's bubbles. So, and uh, yeah, it's been sitting there taking up space in the fridge. So I thought, hey, let's drink that tonight. I can get through this in a half hour show. And I am drinking one of, oh, here we go. No, yes. There it is. Oh. Ah. So I met um, Didier Jimenez, the son of Pierre Jimenez, and we had a, just a lovely time. And that's actually where we filmed one of the scenes in House Hunters International. <laughs> oh, look at the segue that she's bringing up for us. Oh, I got a, I got a photo for that too. <laughs> I got the very cute ones. If you didn't know, Christine was on International House Hunters as she was searching for her place to stay in the glorious region of champagne um i am not drinking as high class as you christine but i did find the montandon uh oh, really? yeah. yeah i mean it's sitting at like 30 35 to 39 dollars a total wine but it's champagne and it's you know quite possibly the end of the world so let's let's enjoy the hell out of it right absolutely <laughs> but maybe I, not so much in canada no, not the end of the world in Canada. No, um, but you know, I'm in British Columbia, right? And our um, our politicians are doing a pretty amazing job. I'm kind of totally impressed. But um, yeah, it was you know champagne on the couch with Christine, so I absolutely had to uh, break open a bottle of champagne and hang out with you guys and one of my favorites from there. And if you guys didn't know, actually, Christine's been on, on Wine Antics Live twice, but once before she went out to Champagne and lived a, a glorious year, right, out there? Had a wonderful time. Absolutely wonderful, eye-opening. It, You know, I've never lived in a different country other than my own. I'm not known to move, and uh, I am a lover of North Vancouver, British Columbia. So to move to another region was big and uh, somewhat scary, but we had trust and faith that it was going to be perfect. And our daughter came back fluent, and Canada has two national languages, so that was important to us. And I met so many incredible um wine producers wine makers vine like vignerons the the growers everybody was so interconnected in a way that i don't think i've actually experienced before so that was one of my nicest takeaways uh, is there you know we talked to you before you went out and now mm -hmm. you're back is there anything since we're talking about like fantasy travel destinations and and it is throwback thursday so is there any like mm. thing that was so much more surprising like fulfilled a fantasy or was so much more than what you expected in your your time there yes um i never expected to be so <sighs> champagne is known as a bit of a a shishi region okay mm -hmm. so not everyone is welcome with open arms um, and money talks, but that is the perception and it's not necessarily the reality, which made me really happy. Um, I was terrified to contact Champagne Bollinger um, just because for me, they're, you know, pretty paramount on my pyramid and uh, they were one of the easiest, nicest, most welcoming people. And I had a whole afternoon with one person showing me privately Champagne Dutz, which doesn't have a very big name in Canada, unfortunately, yet. Had me for four hours with a family member, private tour, four hours. Um, a catered five course lunch, just he and I. Um, they lit candles all the way up 
that, you know, when we ascended out of the cellar, it was candles with wax coming down the stairs. Oh my God. I was just like, this is, this is happening. Like this is happening to me. So that this was the movie that I've fantasized about, but it's it happened to me. Yeah. No, right? I to drink with it. <laughs> Go to Champagne Goods. I'm telling you, um, you know, there were people that the Champagne Wall are, can be very closed, but we are very sunny, bright Canadians and we hugged more than we should have. We kissed more than we should have <laughs> all the time. Like we didn't stop. It was like, we actually were told in May. So we were there from June till the following August. Um, we were told in May, you know, you just have to say bonjour and do the bees, the kiss, kiss the first time you mm -hmm. see somebody. Mm -hmm. but that's not how we rolled we're like hey it's you again we just saw yeah. you four hours ago Mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just one it's all and, nice and they're, and they're petite they're petite statured people and and mm -hmm. my husband and i are very tall and we would like grab them by the shoulder and like plant kisses on their cheeks and and they're like ah oh, ah oh. these little women were like oh my god oh my god but i you know, we won them over. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so Christine, for those who don't know, like what, what was your purpose of going to Champagne and spending that year there? Uh, Cause I know there's some people watching who don't actually know that. And we're talking to you like everyone does know that. So give us a little bit of that if you can. Um, yes. So it was uh, my husband, David's dream to live a year in France. That was number one. Number two was that we wanted Mackenzie to be fluent in French. Uh, from France, not from mm -hmm. Quebec. No, mm -hmm. no uh, sliding to Quebec, but we wanted to go to the mothership, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And because I had my Master of Champagne certification and that champagne sparkling wine category for me is incredibly important, it's my favorite, um, I wanted to just do a deep dive into the region mm -hmm. and that's what we did. And our dogs came too. <laughs> nice. And you got to be on an international television show that Jen mentioned earlier. Which I'm if I'm not mistaken, that was, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, that was uh, season 145, episode four. Is that correct? <laughs> I'm thinking that's right. It sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was right. <laughs> so yeah. Which I, was a cool I, thing. Yeah. I don't know if I'm answering the question, but yeah. Nice. Well, there's nothing, I mean, you, you wanted to experience a different culture. You'd never been a, a firsthand, right? I'm sure you've experienced it through education, mm -hmm. but you know, you, you're, you wanted your daughter to learn French naturally. Mm -hmm. Um, you'd never traveled out, outside of Canada, right? As you, or never lived outside of Canada. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. so all really good reasons to just pick up your whole life and, uh, move to another area. <laughs> I would have just done it for, hey, you know what? I just want to go there and drink amazing champagne from the source. If you would have just stopped there, I would have been like, yes, I respect that. No qualms. That was just a beautiful byproduct that was like, nice. you know, oh, it's 9.45 in the morning. Un petit verre maintenant. Ah oui, bien sûr. D'accord. That, that happened. Like, you go for a walk and people see you and it's like... Time for a glass of champagne. It's 9.45 a.m. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This is, this it's like is my neighborhood on a Tuesday. Not every day. On a Tuesday, though. You just say yes a lot. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I know that much French. <laughs> uh, oh, so that's it's, awesome. It's, uh, so we talked a little bit about your amazing experience. Maybe uh, the two of us can also share some of our uh, fantasy, throwback Thursday fantasy trips. And it doesn't have to be, you know, wine specific, but mm -hmm. like an amazing experience because we're all kind of in this funk where we're living our day-to-day -day lives mm -hmm. uh, between the couch, the kitchen, and the bedroom. We need a little bit of escape. And sometimes oh. we need to think forward and sometimes we need to think back. Um, I don't mind lamenting. How about you, Stubbs? <laughs> yeah, me neither. And, you know, like, even even just where we are right now and uh, because of the timeline and we don't know what those timelines are going to be like you know normally by now we would have planned or been planning our travel 
uh, mine personally, you know, for work and the rib and I for uh, vacation together this summer. And we really can't do that right now. So, you know, when I think back though, and I think about, you know, amazing wine experiences I've had, um, I, I, I usually go back to two different, two places actually. And, uh, one of them is Willamette Valley. Um, I love the Valley. It's awesome. Uh, great people, cool stuff. Uh, but really I get back to Paso Robles a lot. Um, I've spent some time out there with Chris Kern, uh, a good amount, been out there several times. It's been a while since I've been out there. I was actually trying to figure out a way to maybe roll that in with some travel to the West coast, uh, before heading up to, uh, Oregon this year as well. And once again, just because of the timeline, you really can't uh, plan those things. But I love Paso because, number one, because you have grown varietals and you have uh, classic Bordeaux varietals uh, being grown there. And it's 98%, at least in my experiences. Um, and Christine, I think this piggybacks on what you said a little bit. You know, it's a wine region. It's a well-known wine region, but it, it's kind of a, uh, it's a blue collar. Like it's a down, down to earth uh, region and people are really nice. And, um, you know, it's really that, um, you know, uh, farmer making wine, uh, or people who loved wine and then learned farming or whatever. It's just a cool, it's a cool spot to be. And it's the one place in the world I've ever seen a goat ride a llama. So that was really cool too. I, I mean, I don't really need to know that much of your fantasies, but okay. If that does it for you. Yeah, <laughs> it, it did. It did there. And, uh, Kern just commented most importantly, Kern is there. So, you oh. know, there's always that. Yes, there is always that hanging out, having a cigar by a fire pit and, uh, drinking some nice wine or, uh, having a, having a whiskey with Kern is never a bad thing. Despite oh. what some of you might think, it's always a fun time out there. So, yeah, so yeah, Kern that's, uh, drink well. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. As far as a wine though, as far as a wine trip, uh, that's it, uh, for me, I think it's, it's just a cool spot to be. And there's, uh, so much diversity in the wines being made there and, uh, and you meet some awesome people. Uh, have you been to Paso Christine? I did with the wine blogging conference. Yes. Oh, I must've missed that one. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Okay. Did you also see a llama on a donkey? I mean, I don't know. Is that a reoccurring? We were at thing? different parties. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, what's weird is that was in the middle of the day too. That wasn't even the after hours party. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. Before we get too far into that, let's save it for the after nope. party. Uh, I yes. popped a question below, like, you know, what are you guys, what are your fantasy travels, you, you know, either past um, or as we're going forward and talking, what you're still planning? Because, I mean, just because things are happening in the world doesn't mean our imagination should should stop, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I put a post out um, earlier in the week mm -hmm. and, I was, and I talked about deployment. Um, and anytime I went to Iraq or I was overseas, it was always you were contained, right? And I always generated a fantasy destination in my mind. Like if I, if I leave here and I have a little extra money, this is where I'm going to go. And you go into the details of it. I never actually did any of those things, but it made me feel good to plan it. Nice. <laughs> Trick myself mentally a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you guys talked about, or Stubb talked about Paso, um, my, I think my biggest like throwback fantasy travel experience was, I have, I have two of them. I have Tel Aviv Ooh, and nice. I have, um, my trip to Nice, Marseille and Monaco. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know which one to tell better. I didn't, I drank much more wine, um, in France than I did in Tel Aviv, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but the beaches were epic mm. in tel aviv I, I i had a i was in a hilton right off the right off the beach like i could look out of my mm. window and look at the beach every morning and it and the most amazing seafood uh but if i had to choose of all of those destinations <clears throat> nice was my favorite i was so sad to mm. hear about their um events that have ha happened in the last couple of years because it's an amazing blend of both french mm. culture and italian culture um and uh, like I didn't speak any French whatsoever, no Italian whatsoever, but you know, you can ply me with wine and, and good food and I'm having a great mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that's, are you giggling at the comments, Stub? I am, yes. I'm trying to follow the comments as we go here. 
Yes. Yes, I am. Yes. I just, can I, can I, um, I know this is maybe not on script or not, but no. um, where's the script? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, may I say that if and when any of you beautiful viewers, you two, um, go to Champagne, if that is on your hit list, please contact me, and I will set you up with the people that I know and love. Um, they are fantastic people. And if I can also do another plug for a region in France, that's Alsace. Mm. I want to go so bad. It, I to go to it, blew, yeah. it blew me away. It's like idyllic. It's stunning. It's mm. no words, really. No words. Is there a tear? Is, is that a tear? Oh, yeah. A little bit. Okay. Seems like you were getting very sentimental there. So oh, I'm sentimental. I'm Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now apologize for getting sentimental because I'm you're Canadian. So sorry. Yes. Yes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't say oh. Christine, I can guarantee you, if I ever decide to take a trip to Champagne, I'm actually going to buy you a ticket and make you be a guide for me. Yeah. Um, done. 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 I done. Feel like I feel like that'll be doing it right there. Yeah. I feel like that would be too. Like she's she's our guide and our ticket into the most amazing experiences. Like I feel like that's Absolutely. what it is. Um, you gotta start learning your French, though. We. Oh, you gotta. We. So here's another tip. Um, I think that if you are traveling to a destination where um, the language is different than English, it really means a lot to the local people if you can communicate and if you're trying or if you've got you know five to ten sentences that you can pull out of the bag you're going to go farther and i think that that was um david and my and mckenzie's experience i had you know my grade 12 um canadian french but i was using it and i was trying and i was i was you could they could tell that i was sincere and I think that a lot of times when people go traveling in wine destinations, it's like, yeah, what can you do for me? And it's like, no, no, yeah. no, 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 I'm here to learn and I'm here to be a part of your culture and your situation, like mm -hmm. teach me. And I think mm -hmm. that that is a really good perspective um, on wine travel, really anywhere. It doesn't mean that you know, when, we, when I go to Paso, when, when we go to Finger Lakes or, or whatever, I'm, I take that same sentiment. Like, what can I, what am I learning here, right? And, and what little bit of homework have I done going into a new region as well? Yeah. Like, what are the grapes are, that are being grown? What is, uh, you know, what is the climate? What can I talk about? What can I, can I do to make that connection? You know, yeah. at least in the United States, right? Yeah. So oh, and now you've reminded me how much I love the Finger Lakes as well. Oh. I, I would love to go back to the Finger Lakes. Oh, I did I not taste Lakes. enough. Yeah. 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 Some of my favorite people are there as well, too. It's good. It's, it's a good place. That's it's good time. Some love sending out to you, Aaron. <laughs> if you didn't get, if you didn't get that. Um, yeah, a bit, so, a little bit. so let's talk about our forward fantasies, like going forward in time. If, if the world were a lot calmer and maybe if a budget weren't a concern, where would you fantasize about going? Mm. Stop, you've had time to prepare for this. Don't play coy. <laughs> I have. No, I have. <laughs> that question being asked that in that way. Um, I think for me, like, I would love to spend some more time in, in French wine regions as well. But I would really, really, really love to go to Italy and, and be able to really spend some time there uh, in the different regions. Uh, because Italian wine is so... It, it's so broad and I, I really would like to go there and experience uh, those wines in the villages, in the towns where these wines are made and the, the food and the culture around it. Yeah. And just like Christine, I would be very demanding and say, teach me, which is very forward and a little, a little authoritarian, Christine. I, I don't know. <laughs> Does that go with Kern's comment of why is Christine being so rude? Yes. Only yes, messing. clearly. Yeah, he's, he's only messing. I yeah. Rude comments so i don't know what's happening <laughs> you gotta go over to youtube and you can see the live comments for sure there's, That's what there's... I'm keeping up with the comments on the youtube here for us as we uh 
<laughs> as we kind of wind There's actually down. been quite a few so, for uh, you specifically, Christine. So oh, um, nice. I have not said Kern's comments because I don't know how to pronounce either of the words that he's used. He's He specifically said, what about the Jura or... Oh, Jura or Savoie, yeah. Savoie, there you go. Like I am... Mm. Good. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you want to go? Yeah. Uh oh oh oh. I uh Italy as well. I've never I've other than Monaco. Good good transition there. Good. Get me on the spot. Um <laughs> Italy as well because I have at least one good friend, Katerina, who is doing amazing things in the Italian wine industry and I would love to just use and abuse her a little bit uh for an amazing experience. Well, it's and that kind of drink. fantasy we're talking about. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to go anywhere with that. Thanks, though, Stub. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'd, I'd love to travel around there. I've been to Vincenza, which is up in the north, um, what is that, east corner, uh, but just went to the airbase and then made it to Monaco, which is right on the border of it, but never actually toured around or explored, uh, or Greece. And I, I think it was like two years mm. ago that I talked about resolutions on Wine Antics Live and wanted to drink more Greek wine. I have mm -hmm. yet to do so. So maybe I just need to go to the damn country and drink like a fish. I mean, just trying to figure it out. I like it. I think it's a great plan. I mean, it's beautiful. I love the Mediterranean. If I could if I could die anywhere, and, and not because of any pandemic, but if I could just die anywhere in my retirement, um, it would be <laughs> on the Mediterranean. Sometimes I just say stuff, Christine, to watch Stubbs' face change, like just completely change. Well, what I love is that I think all three of us have very bizarre, fun, animated facial expressions. <laughs> We're not all like, whatever. No. Yeah. It makes for the best thumbnails, I swear. Um, but yeah, I, uh, ever since going to Tel Aviv and Nice again on the, Mod on the Mediterranean, I, I just belong there. Like, mm. that's, that's, I just know it in my soul. Mm. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, Christine, I mean, champagne is pretty up there, but... Don't cry for me, Argentina! Oh, like, I no. didn't... I've i never been to Argentina, um, Chile, the whole thing. Argentina is really calling my name, and it has been, I don't know, for six months. So, one day, somehow, some way, I'll get there. Maybe a year in South America, so the daughter can learn Spanish as well. Oh, I'll start learning Spanish tomorrow if I know I'm going. <laughs> I have like four sentences, but they all have to do with a cerveza, so I've got mm -hmm. to up my I've got to up my wine game um, lingo. Mm, absolutely, I would agree. Tempranillo. I would have to Did you just say tempranillo? Tempranillo. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I'm trying. <laughs> I mean, when we want to prioritize what we need, <laughs> now oh, she's oh, crying. Well, and Spain would be another one. Yep. Yeah. I've not been to Spain. No. Rioja. So, so pretty much the three of us just want to eat and drink our way through every awesome region that makes wine. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, no that's, problem. Yeah. Now, have you been? Have you two been to beautiful British Columbia? I have not. Jen? No, I have not. Oh, I haven't no, been to Canada, didn't. period. What? Ooh. I know. I know. Okay. I know. Resolution 2021. Canadian. <laughs> okay. Canadian. Well, maybe, maybe we'll all show up and celebrate Jason Priestley's birthday next year. Sure, if you know him. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jen. I know Jen. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that, but okay. <laughs> he tries sometimes. You listen to Norm Macdonald and, you know, yeah. We Those have a lot just... more going on than that. Yeah. Well, you have a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of famous people from Canada. <laughs> we have some beautiful wine from, you know, the Okanagan. You know, I, have, I have tasted a, a decent amount of British Columbian wine, and I'd like to taste more, and I really would love to visit uh, to visit the area, though, actually. Okay. Because well, when I hear it, it's gorgeous. Just make it happen, and I will be again your tour guide. No problem. I love it. 
I'm all in. There, I'm all is in. Is there some kind of judging we can do, even though our palates, I mean, maybe somewhat refined, but not really refined? Is there a humorous judging that we can participate in? <laughs> Uh, we will set up. We will set up a judging panel. Whatever you want. <laughs> because you're do you do judge? Oh no, you do judging in London. I thought you were sorry. No, and and I'm I, just gonna keep I, drinking. No, no, it's okay. I assess wines for British Columbia, like our BQA, our appellation. Um, but there's also wine judging in British Columbia. We can do anything you want. You just say the word. We'll let it. We'll let it happen. Let it happen. Let it flow. Wait. Make sure you clip this because we're going to need to use this as evidence uh, later okay. on. Stuff. I don't want to say things that I don't mean, so bring it on, baby. <laughs> so nice. um, we haven't had a chance to talk about what you have been working on with Girls Go Great. What's going on? I saw that you posted, you, you know, in, in March. I think March 18th was your last post. How's the yes. blogging been going? I mean, are you doing more now that the world is... is... Blogging's good. Um, I actually um, am writing an article for a magazine, and that makes me very, very happy. So I'm going to be in print, um, which is one of my dreams for uh, this upcoming year. So that's going to happen. Hopefully the printing press goes <laughs> and, it, and it becomes a reality. But um, yeah, no, I ghostwrite, I write. Um, I am writing a play slash book slash, I'm not sure how it's gonna manifest about our time in Champagne. Um, mm. There's so many, I was, I started with the writing of a book and then the characters that we met over the course of our 15 months together just were so alive um that I just I almost felt like I couldn't do them justice in words and I wanted to see them in action and there were so many little vignettes over the mm. over the time so I think I'm gonna write my first play nice you know? oh, why not nice. <laughs> why not indeed I like it thanks so yeah. that, writing has become more of my well, even more of my focus, judging is still there, assessing is still there, but you know, with so much um, shut down right now, um, it's the perfect time to write. It is, it's a perfect time to do a lot of things not dependent on technology, mm -hmm. <laughs> like puzzles, <laughs> I mean, drinking. I can I get behind know. that one. Yeah. <laughs> puzzles while drinking, I don't know. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Yes. I'm an inner 60-year-old, so, okay? What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> it's all right. That is all right. All right, yeah, Seb. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I said, yes, that's that's me. Yes. Girls go great. That's that's what I do. And uh, doing some neat rosé reviews with my girlfriend, um, Danita Dyer, who's another Canadian mm -hmm. lady. Mm -hmm. We have our, um, our Facebook page is The Pink Tank. And mm -hmm. we do only rosé reviews, so that's kind of fun. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a fun one too. That's a fun. That's a fun site. I, I really dig that. Putting a focus on rosé because people, you know, get a weird rosé gets a bad rap amongst uh, non wine circles sometimes. And I like that. I like that you that uh, that you guys take that seriously and uh, and make it fun as well. Thank you. It's cool. Yeah. Well, you guys are adorable together. You have a lot of fun. You could definitely tell you're you're good friends and yeah. just drinking wine, and everybody relates to that, right? Just a couple. I keep saying we're Betty and Veronica. Aww. Who's Betty and who's Veronica? Exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> you switch roles every once in a while. No, she's more the brunette, and mm -hmm. I'm more the blonde. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it doesn't work. I don't know. In my brain, it did. I everyone was everyone has their own preference. Everyone has their own preference, Jen. I mean, don't don't put people on the spot. <laughs> yeah. I'm just oh, I'm funny. I'm funny. <laughs> I like how you amuse yourself. Oh, I'm funny. I amuse Jen, myself. I love, your, I love your glass. Thank you. It's a beautiful tulip. 
I know. I'm uh, Thea. If Thea were here, but no, she's got Cards Against Humanity mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, she would be so proud of me because for years and years I've been a dysfunctional adult collecting a myriad of glasses from different wine events that I've attended. However, Best Buy put on a, a wine deal um, right around right around January where there were like glasses for nine ninety nine, like Riedel glasses for nine ninety nine for four of them. So I adulted up and got myself some glasses. Very pretty. I think. You and it makes me look so sophisticated. Well, the makeup looks you like, whoa, you're yeah. amazeballs. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, you know I why I, I did I all this. I dream, obviously. Shush. <laughs> well, you know why I did all of this, right? No. So I do, <laughs> apparently you haven't been uh, checking out what I do on Instagram. <laughs> so I have been uh, trying to find a, a different way to relate to people, like bring wine into real life, as we all do, right? As content creators, we're trying to find a different way to bring people along on their wine journey. Mm -hmm. And Justin Cowrie's wife, Lauren, who has not been in the wine industry, but we know him in, in the beverage industry, I drug her along to do something called beauty and wines. So we're pairing different wines with beauty looks. And where's my bottle? If you kind of see fun. the colors on there, it's red, gold, and black. Red, gold, and black. Try, try. Oh. I know, right? Like it's. I like that. Yeah. So that's over on Instagram, and that's why I did it. You know, to, and, and I'm trying to be pretty for you too. I did the always same thing with my look tonight, but I modeled it after a bottle of the prisoner. So <laughs> he did promise to wear a tux next week, though. So we'll see how that goes. I might wear a tux. I may wear a tux next week. Yeah. It is his Why birthday not? episode. Oh, I That's know true. the birthday coming up. That's true. <laughs> we had birthday yeah. conversations last week, this week. What time? We did, did indeed. Yes. Yeah. It'll be a fun show. We'll have a very special uh, guest on that one. <laughs> and if you want to know who, you got to join us in the after party because we're coming to the close of the shenanigans here Indeed. Over, over on YouTube yes. and live. Stuff is going to drop the link uh, in YouTube and we'll post it up on Facebook because we know lots of people still uh, follow us on Facebook and are like, where are you live? What? Yeah. Where are you live? Where's the after party? Um <laughs> Christine, any final thoughts as, as we're heading out for tonight? Mm. Yeah, be kind to each other. Don't drink the boxed wine, drink the good stuff. You'd never know what tomorrow brings. Indeed, I like it. Spoken like a beautiful Canadian. Thank you very much. Just be kind, okay, people? Just be kind. <laughs> Stubb, you have any final thoughts? Uh, I don't. I want to thank Christine for joining us. I, I love catching up with her and chatting. And, um, you know, it's kind of cool. We talk to a lot of people, you know, on and off through, especially through social media, because we're, you know, distanced a lot of us from each other uh, geographically normally. And now that we're all kind of socially distancing and being in our own homes, we're uh, able to do more of these and catch up. And uh, I'm glad that uh, us being the uh, kind of old school uh, drinking and chatting show uh, that we're able to uh, keep doing this. Absolutely. Remember, folks, we've been doing this for four years. You thought a virtual happy hours are new? No. We've been drinking on Zoom for like four years together. So come join us in the after party. Stubb's going to drop the link. And again, I'll echo the same sentiments as, sentiments as Stubb. Thank you, Christine, for joining us. You, Absolutely. you are a delight to chat with. And uh, <laughs> and it's so nice to have the refreshing uh, warmth and kindness come from a, a Canadian. We need to hear it down here in America. So while. Everybody sucks. else, have a good night. Stay safe and uh, stay healthy. All right. Cheers. <laughs>